Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. My geometric topology series continues today with homology spheres. Homology spheres are kind of weird objects. They want to be spheres, but not really. So they're always fun. And they're always kind of type of counter examples for everything you ever seen. Uh, well, or they're good counter examples for a lot of things in low dimensional topology. So without trying to get too much of the details, there's an extremely important invariant in topology, which is called homology. And homology spheres refers to homology. I'm not going to really explain what it is, but it's a great invariant and it essentially counts holes. So how many holes does your space have? Well, a zero dimensional hole, uh, well, if, if it exists, it has a zero dimensional hole. So both the torus, which is a swim ring, and the solid torus, which is a donut, uh, have one zero dimensional hole. Uh, a one dimensional hole, well, the torus here has two one dimensional holes. You can go around like this or like this. This one has only one because this one is filled in. So the only one that remains is this one. And there's a two dimensional hole if you want uh, in this one here, which is the area in some sense is uh, the space in between that is hollow and here, well, it's not, so it, it's filled. That's essentially what it is. The zero dimensional hole is a connected component. A one dimensional hole is something that you could put, neck, put a necklace around and a two dimensional hole is something where you can blow air into. There are three dimensional holes, four dimensional holes, and so on. And the homology measures those holes. I will use homology here as a black box. The only thing you need to know, it's an algebraic datum associated to a space. And it's really, really powerful and topologists like it a lot. It's extremely good. It distinguishes so many spaces and it's, it's really, really fantastic. And the question starts off really simple. So if you take our good old friend, the soccer ball, S2, its homology is essentially uh, just two dimensional. It has one component in H0 and there's one component in H1, namely, well, H0 is, it exists and H1, um, you can essentially see a hole if you want uh, in this space. Okay, so homology of the sphere, relatively easy object. And you might wonder, so homology gets really complicated in general for general topological spaces. Uh, so S, S2 is the easiest among non-trivial ones. So maybe you just take, this is a def algebraic definition of S2. So instead of defining it topologically, which might be very difficult, you define it algebraically by the object that has this type of homology. And this actually works for two dimensions. So homology of a manifold is a homology of S2, if and only if the manifold is S2. So the algebraic definition, well, I'll say again what the algebraic definition is, I just define uh, a space to be a sphere if it has a homology of the sphere, homology spheres. And this actually works in two dimensions. So the only space that has the homology of a sphere is the sphere. And you might wonder whether this is a coincidence or whether this is general. Uh, if it would be general, we would have found a different definition of a sphere, which would be pretty amazing. So, uh, so by the title of this video and that I'm making this video to begin with, you probably already guessed that this is not true anymore. And it turns out to be just very, very wrong. So in general, you have a lot of objects that uh, has the homology of the sphere. It was an open problem a long time ago, but it was an open problem at one point, and Poincaré solved it by, well, finding Poincaré, the, what is called Poincaré's homology sphere. And Poincaré did it differently, so not in this way. Poincaré didn't quite know the, the knot picture I discussed, but in terms of knots, it's actually quite easy. It is the manifold you get by minus one surgery around the trefoil. Or alternatively, if you're a big fan of E8 diagrams, you do this funny uh, two, minus two surgery around the E8 Duncan diagram. So the hop flings arranged at the E8 A Duncan diagram. If you don't know what E8 Duncan diagrams are, this one is, it, they appear by the way everywhere. It's definitely worthwhile to know what they are, but uh, these two gives the same space. So the minus one surgery around the trefoil is an example of something that is a sphere, but it's certainly not a sphere. So it just has a homology of the sphere, but it's actually very, very far away from being a sphere. Uh, so the pi one of the sphere, uh, so this was S3, pi one of S3 is trivial, but pi one of P is not trivial. <laughs> it, it is not a very hard group, but it's still of order 100. 
120. It's not a symmetrical, but it's still of order 120. Anyway, so those beasts exist, and if it goes wrong in dimension three, it certainly goes wrong uh, everywhere else, essentially. So dimension two is kind of this coincidence where it still uh, works out pretty well. So for completeness, here's a statement, an oriented three manifold. So we don't want crazy spaces, just some nice three manifolds. I call it a homology sphere if it has the same integral homology as, as two. And I would call it an R homology sphere for some ground ring, same. And I would call it a rational homology sphere, same. There's a slightly different uh, well, object. So the most important ones are probably the second ones, but I give you some more examples. On this slide, actually, we'll discuss it in a second. Um, so homology spheres exist. So these beasts actually exist. So spaces, which doesn't doesn't look so crazy. It's not it's not some crazy three dimensional space or some who knows. No, it's actually a manifold, and those beasts exist, and you have quite a few of them. Um, so we already had the surgery uh, gives homology sphere, the Poincaré one. This is of this type here. Um, but for example, all the lens spaces. They are rational homology spheres, and uh, you can create them by surgery, essentially around hopflings, um, just certain labeled hopflings, and this is really not so bad. So a lot of a lot of those pictures actually already give things that are homology spheres, and you have a lot of them. Uh, so it's kind of a bit, bit of a surprising result. They turn out to be really good counterexamples to a lot of theorems in low dimensional topology because homology is such a great tool in general topology but not so much in low dimensional topology. This is essentially what this statement here says. Already for the sphere, there exists infinitely many other beasts, which are very far away from being spheres here. Look at this example here. Uh, they're very, actually very far from, away from being spheres, but if the homology can't distinguish them, which is kind of a cool statement. So we need some better tools in three dimensional topology. For two dimensional topology, as I said, it was still okay. But for three-dimensional topology, we definitely need some better tools. Um, and there are actually infinitely many of them. So there's a whole family of them, which I'm going to discuss in the next video. And they are called Seifert homology spheres. Uh, here's an example, again, surgery around this beast here gives the Seifert homology sphere. And the way to imagine them, I mean, if you really want to imagine them, why there are three numbers, I will give some more details in the next. Uh, video is they arise essentially via this equation here, which is kind of the first non-trivial equation you would write down with three variables. So uh, x to the p, y to the q, and z to the r. And in this setup, they're usually called breeze column manifolds, whatever. Um, but there are certain type of complicated homology spheres, and there are infinitely many of them, with kind of the smallest one being the Poincaré homology sphere. So I need to take P, Q, and R pairwise relatively prime. So the smallest possible solution is three, uh, two, three, five, and that's exactly the Poincaré sphere. But for any such choice, you have uh, an homology sphere, and they're determined by those three numbers. So you have really infinitely many of these beasts. OK, so if you know homology and you have seen general topology, then you know homology is an absolutely great and important and super useful tool in general topology, but it turns out to be not really adapted to low dimensional topology. And the homology spheres, are infinitely many of them. They have the homology of the spheres, so homology can't tell you anything about them, but they are very, very far away from spheres in general. That's why they're important counterexamples, and there will be those ciphered manifolds and the, the one uh, minus one uh, surgery around the the trifold is the so-called Poincaré uh, homology sphere, which is was the first example of such an homology sphere. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.